Welcome to the video on checkmating the Lone King. In this video, you will learn the three most fundamental forms of checkmate against the Lone King involving the Queen, two Rooks, and one Rook. Okay, so this is one of the most important videos to really memorize the principles and concepts in because you could do everything right during the other stages of the game, but if you do not know how to achieve victory in these situations with a queen or two rooks or a rook against a lone king, that will be sad, right, when you can't convert that into a win. So with this video and with practice, you will be able to checkmate a lone king with ease, hopefully afterwards. Okay, so instead of just making moves, it's much more important to explain principally what is the best and most efficient way to achieve a checkmate in these situations without making it complicated. All right, so with all three of these types of checkmates, there are a couple themes that kind of prevail amongst all of them. And two of them are the most important. Okay, so number one is using our major piece, either the queen or the rook or two rooks, we want to cut off and control the squares where the opposing king wants to go to in order to push it backwards. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we're not going to be able to give checkmate in the middle of the board with the king just sitting here, all right? The way we're going to be able to deliver checkmate is when it's back on the last rank or file of the chessboard or the corner in some cases, okay? So we can't just checkmate the king in the middle of the board. There are too many possible squares to cover, okay? So one of the most common mistakes that I see beginner players make is they think it's a good idea to just give checks all the time because they think they're doing something and making progress. But in reality, this achieves nothing because the king is just going back and forth and you're not driving it back towards where it needs to go. So step one is using your major piece to cut the king off from the squares where it wants to go. And step number two, which is very simple, is incorporate and use the king in the game, in the attack. The lone queen can't mate by itself, okay? You have to use the king as teamwork here, so you have to get it involved. So the way this works is, as or once you're cutting off the squares where the king wants to go to, you simply advance your king forward towards the opponent's king wherever it goes as you continually push it back or sideways towards one of the edges of the board. So you just simply follow it. So what does this look like? In this position, what I would do, probably the best move, is queen to b4. So why is this a good move? Because we're achieving step one. With this queen on b4, we are cutting off this entire fourth rank from the black king to go to. All right, so when the king moves somewhere, what do we do next? Bring our king into the game to attack. The king's gonna try to stay in the center for as long as possible, and only now, once we've positioned our king as close as possible, to the enemy king is when we can deliver a check with our queen in order to push the king backwards a rank. All right, so watch how this works. Let's say we give a check here, for example. Okay, so now with this check, the black king only has two legal moves. It can either go to d6 or f6. All right, and regardless of where it goes, what we're gonna do next is exactly what we did on move number one when we played queen to b4. 
the purpose of which was to cut off and control the entire fourth rank. Well, now we're just going to do the exact same thing. Queen to f5. Okay? Same thing. We're just cutting off the fifth rank now. The king moves somewhere. And we follow. Bringing our king as close as possible to the opposing king. Okay, same pattern. The king's going to have to stay in the middle, or it should stay in the middle, to make it as difficult as possible as far as resistance. We Now we deliver a check. The king moves. And as it gets pushed back, we keep advancing forward. Okay, so you may find this is actually easier than you thought with this method and this system. Okay. And you see that as the king moves away, we don't panic because this queen is nicely controlling all of these squares. So we don't care that the king's over here. We care more about getting our king closer to the opposing king. So we just simply keep walking it over because we have time and our opponent with only one king does not. Okay, so we just keep walking our king over until we've reached a situation where they're basically next to each other, and then we can deliver check. All right. Now it's important to recognize that there could be a common pitfall here, where when the king goes back to the corner, if we're not careful and we think, okay, well, the king is nicely corralled in the corner, now we just bring our king up, this unfortunately would be stalemate a terrible way to end the game, right? Because the Black King is not in check. However, you'll notice that it can't move anywhere legally. So the game ends in a draw, as you guys have learned. So instead, if you're faced with the situation, just be careful, recognize it, make sure you're watching out for, you know, when the Queen's on like a G6 or F7, there is a danger for stalemate. So all you have to do if you're afraid you might forget, you can just drop the queen back one square. That's all you have to do. Because that just enables the king to have breathing room to go back and forth. And that's all you need. Only move. King here. Now we bring our king forward. The king has to go back. And checkmate. And that's it. Is there a faster way? Technically, yes. Absolutely. However. That is not our purpose. My purpose, as the teacher of these videos, is to make sure that there is a virtually foolproof way for you to execute these checkmates so that there's no confusion and that you don't mess it up when you're faced with a situation in your own games. Okay? So once again, we bring our queen to cut off a rank or a file again. If it helps you visualize it better, if you don't want to play via the rank, you can make a move like queen to d3, for example, right, with the idea to cut off the file instead and push the king back this way. It's whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever is easiest for you. But the idea is that we're cutting off lines, and then as the king moves back and forth, then we simply just bring our king towards our opponent's king. And that is it and you will be able to checkmate your opponent every time without too much difficulty, as long as you just don't forget that in these situations, if the king goes in the corner, you have to watch out for stalemate. Right? Obviously, if the king goes towards the middle of the board, the stalemate is not really a problem. We continue with the same methodology, right? The queen goes here, cutting off the entire rank, only move. The king comes here to what's called opposition, right? When the kings are, are opposing each other, literally, with one square in between. And now whichever direction the king goes to, whether it's f8 or d8, there is checkmate next move. Either via f7 or d7. And that's it. Okay, so that same technique can actually be applied to 
these other two checkmates too that we will go over. And that's really it. Okay? So here in this situation, as I go through it, see if you can figure out kind of what the best ideas are for white in this situation. Okay? Now the one difference here with the two rook checkmate against a lone king is that only here with the two rooks, this does not apply to the queen or the lone rook, but only with the two rooks. The two rooks can actually checkmate the black king by themselves. And the way that they do this is by executing what's called a roller pattern. All right, so what does this mean? Well, I'll show you. We start by doing the exact same thing as we learned with the queen, right? Moving one of our rooks to cut off an entire rank. The king moves somewhere. And now the technique is we take our other rook, move it as far away as possible from the opposing king, because rooks are long range pieces. And we want to put our rooks next to each other on opposing files or ranks. So what does this look like? Well, we bring our rook all the way here to a8 in this case, with the idea to bring the rook here to a5, which cannot be stopped. And now you can begin to see this roller pattern. The roller pattern is when the two rooks control consecutive ranks or files, and then they keep kind of one-upping each other, moving to the next file. So this is what it looks like. There's nothing black can do with it. It's just a lone king. This is unstoppable. Okay? So let's say the king moves here. Now we deliver a check, which is a proactive one, right? Because this rook here is preventing the king from going forward. The king moves. The rook goes to b6, right? Because now this rook on a5 is doing the cutting off. Okay, the king's going to go. So what do you think we do here? All we do is just move our rooks to the other side of the board. As far away as possible. Okay, so now if the king goes to the center, then there's a two move checkmate with check. And then whichever square black's king goes to, rook h8 is mate. Or if the king goes to b7, for instance, stopping the rook from going to a7, we just transfer the rook to the other side and do the exact same thing. Okay, so this is the rook roller pattern, where together there's a very powerful synergy between the two rooks in open positions, raking across open ranks and files. The lone king is completely helpless to this uh, roller pattern where they work in tandem, whereas one is delivering check, the other is cutting the king off from advancing forward, either via rank or file. Okay, and just make sure to keep the rooks as far away as possible while doing this. Now, of course, if you don't feel comfortable with the rook roller, you don't need to execute it this way. However, it's probably the easiest against the lone king. The third checkmate involving the lone rook is the one where you have to once again incorporate your king into the game. And again, you can do this with the two rooks too, but honestly, the rook roller is probably the easiest thing to remember right? Just keeping your rooks together far away and one overlapping the other, okay? So the lone rook checkmate is by far the most complicated and most difficult of the three, all right? But again, although it is the most complicated and the, and the trickiest, the principles remain the exact same. We're going to cut off the king and we're going to bring our king as close as possible to the opponent's king. There are just a few tricky things that you have to remember in order to execute this properly. Okay, so take this position, for instance. First move is the same. We're going to move our rook to b4. Why? To cut the king off from the fourth rank. The king's going to go to d5. Okay. And now we're going to bring our king to the middle of the board. Let's say the king goes to c5. 
So the difference between the rook and the queen checkmate, of course, is that unlike the queen, the king is able in these situations to get directly next to the lone rook. If this were a queen, king to c5 would be illegal because the queen could just take it, which is not possible, right? But in these situations, the king has more mobility and it can get directly next to the rook, which is why this checkmate is the most complicated. Okay, so instead of delivering a check now, like rook to c4, for example, we have to remember what the rook is. And I hinted at it in the previous example with the two rooks. The rook is a long distance piece. So you have to take advantage of that fact versus the short range piece of the king. So we don't want to keep our rook close to the enemy king. We want it far away, but still doing the exact same job. Okay, so in this situation, we just move our rook all the way to the other side of the board, far away. Okay? Now, the other difference between the queen checkmate and this lone rook checkmate, and this is maybe the most important thing that you must remember, okay? The only way that you should deliver a check to your opposing king is when opposition has been achieved and it is your move. So what does this mean? Well, let's take a look. So if the king moves to a square like b5, for example, we don't want to be delivering check to h5. Why? Because that's allowing the opposing king to move forward, right? We don't want that. We want to push it backwards. However, if the king were to go back to d5, okay, because opposition has been achieved, right, where the kings are directly across from one another, now and only now do we want to say check because this king here does the job of preventing the opposing king from moving forward to any of these squares and because the rook is now on the fifth rank controlling these two squares the king has no choice but to go back so this seems simple enough but there is one more tricky element here Okay, so once the king is pushed back, the rook is nicely cutting off the rank. What do we do? We bring our king forward, simple enough. But now, when the king moves, notice that we're not in opposition anymore. And if we simply move our king, this is a dancing game, right? Nothing is being achieved by moving the king back and forth because we don't want to check to allow the king out, right? So, the way to make sure the opposition has to be achieved is we use what's called a waiting move. We're essentially just passing the move back to our opponent and saying, okay, I don't want to move my king. I want to leave it here on d4 so that you may have to come back to d6 and only then I can check you. So how do we do this? Well, we just simply move our rook to the other side of the board. Okay, so nothing's changed. We've just kind of given it a free pass. We haven't lost control of any squares, but what we've done is that now if the king were to go to d6, opposition has been met and it's our move. Now we can give check and push the king back. Black shouldn't do this because that's not the path of most resistance. So black should play king to f6, for example. And now we follow with the king, right? If the black king ever goes this way, opposition will be reached, and we can deliver a check. All right, so we keep following the king. Should make sense, All right? And eventually, it'll run out of real estate. It's going to have to go back to opposition or go back a rank, right? And if it just goes back a rank, then you simply move up a rank with your rook. That's it. Okay, and now we bring our king, right? So the moment opposition is not reached and it's our move, all we do, guys, is just wait. Just make a waiting move, okay? So because, again, we don't want to go king to g5 because the king will just go back to f7, and this is just dancing back and forth. But all we do is we just move our rook, for example, one square, and you pass it back to our opponent, right, to achieve opposition. 
So let's say king goes here. Now we follow with our king. And when opposition has been met, now you deliver the check. And that's really it, guys. And that's the foolproof way to deliver checkmate with the king and rook, right? So as a finish, let's say you go here. Okay. The king comes. Okay. If you want to, you know, you can keep following with the king if you choose, right? And in the moment you get attacked, you just go to the other side of the board. Same thing, right? So now if he goes this way, this is checkmate. And if he keeps going to the corner, then you just follow with the king. The moment opposition has been reached, checkmate. Okay, so pretty quick video, but super important video, because you have to know and learn how to checkmate flawlessly with a queen, two rooks, or rook against a lone king. This is super important. And on the flip side, if you're defending it against someone who may not know how to execute it properly, you can be annoying and put up a lot of resistance, right? From the lone king's point of view, you just want to try to remain in the middle of the board for as long as humanly possible, right? Until you're forced to go backwards towards one of the edges of the board. All right, so to recap really quickly, with the queen mate, arguably the easiest, we are cutting off the king with either a full rank or file. Advancing our king as close as possible to our opponent's king, and then just delivering a close check. Advancing one rank or filed forward, and that's it. Down the board, again, you have to be careful of stalemate possibilities, but just remember to make a little room, and that's it. With the two rooks, this is the only checkmate where the two rooks don't need the king's assistance, they can do it all by themselves. And the way that you achieve it is, again, you cut off the king, you bring the rooks as far away as possible from the king, and you set up a rook roller like this. And whenever the king goes to one side, you just whip the rooks to the other. And that's it. And finally, the king and rook checkmate, the most complicated one, the same two principles apply, cutting off the king, bringing our king, and all you have to remember now is just these waiting moves to achieve opposition, okay? And the moment opposition is achieved, then you deliver the check. Bringing the king forward, and when you need to, use a waiting move by bringing the rook to the other side of the board. And that's it, guys. You just follow with the king and push it backwards. Okay? So instead of going back and forth, just use a waiting move and now check. All right? Be sure to practice these examples as much as possible. They are very important. Good luck and thank you for watching.